Hey guys, this is Andrea from Anyone Wonderland How To Experience CNDS. Welcome back to the channel. So guys, um, I was a bit stuck for a while on content ideas. Then I went to a group that I do once a month. Essentially this group is based around bartering, keeping stuff out of the landfill, being green without being extreme about it. And because of my epilepsy, I late last year gave up driving, surrendered my licence. I rely on either support workers or family, friends or um, taxis, which is a whole other story. I have a video of disability and transport. But um, there was something that just I've noticed in most of my relationships and I've done a video on disability and relationships but this one let's spill the tea on this one so pretty much within this group it's been growing and growing and growing um, within the group there is a natural hierarchy and pecking order um, the group is organized through Facebook and because of its members and the way it's organised, there is actually a lot of admin going behind the scenes. Because one of the core rules is, it is all bartering. There is no money available. And because of we swap produce and cuttings and gardening tips, magazines, any craft items, craft ideas, generally sit around and have a bit of a chit chat about our lives and how things are going. It's a really nice democratic environment. But on the way there, I had someone tell me that unwarranted medical advice and just a few subtle things that I know people, other fellow people with a disability will have heard the phrases before of like people essentially wanting to cure you. The white saviour trope, I believe it's called. Uh, this lady I've started to see is a lovely lady, do not get me wrong. But she falls into the white saviour trope of if you would only do. I have accepted and I have a blog post on why I can't learn to love my disabilities. But I've accepted where I'm at and this is not actually helpful that she's saying this. And then I got talking to a friend who I have known since high school, who was one of the original organisers of this group, found out a bit more of why essentially these admins were forced out. And it was actually an erroneous belief that where we hold the swap, the group is associated with. It's only used as a venue, not us being affiliated with it. Um, and it's one of those situations where it's boiled down to a he said, she said, but this lady has not realised the friendships that led to this swap group and the idea behind it. So what I'm getting at, guys, is that we, people with a disability, often don't want to be cured. They want to be accepted. And guys, it can actually be quite dangerous to give us um, warranted health advice and or to put certain herbs in our food or to set us up for failure essentially that you just need to one of the things that she was suggesting this lady was I just needed to eat better I just need to exercise more where for me unless it's under the supervision of an exercise physiologist it's actually quite dangerous for me to do exercise that is not incidental exercise, like walking in a park with a friend or walking up to the corner store, walking upstairs to the support worker's office. It's actually quite dangerous for me. And this is the thing I've noticed an overarching theme of these people that kill them with kindness, but they don't actually realize guys how their ignorance and unwillingness to actually listen to you affects your mental health. So 
me having ADHD, I often will vent to inappropriate people and will be quite guarded. There's one or the other, which is fine until it isn't. And this person I thought was a safe person, I could vent to her, but she's one of these people that if you're willing to help in the situation, you're a friend. But as soon as you have other things going on and you say no, that support, that encouragement drops off the tree. Um, there, so this one has been a rambly through the weeds update about Annie's life, but in linking it back to disability, people, if you love someone with a disability or are friends with them, uh, guys, it's simple. Just respect their limits. Respect what they're saying about their health. It might not be that they want to be cured. It might be that it's frustrating them and they just need an outlet to vent. We all need people who we can vent to, who are those safe people, guys. And this thing, it shows me how transactional this relationship is. So guys, that's one thing that I really want to stress today is that your friendship shouldn't be dependent on what you can do for them. It should be mutual based on respect and understanding. And you can have totally differing views but agree to disagree. That's called being an adult. And that's a really interesting one that waking up that this lady is a lot older and is trying to mother hen me. When I have thankfully my own mother is still around I trust her, I trust her advice, I trust my sisters and I've got friends who and support workers who I have a really great relationship if it's something that I feel I can't go to family or friends with. Um, but in essentially losing my main support worker I was venting about this and I didn't realise how much information I was giving to this lady and the thoughtlessness of her just assuming that I would step up, be an admin behind the scenes for this group, it just shows that you need to have firm boundaries and people sometimes will react differently depending on your boundaries. Um, however, if they do genuinely respect you as a friend, as a person and want you in your, their life, as a person with a disability, they will respect it. But the thing is, people with disabilities have been dictated to for so long, they don't know what those boundaries look like. So I would encourage you guys to seek out someone you trust, someone who is, a, and if you have it in your plan, a mental health professional, a coach, a support worker who is trained in mental health, to work with you around boundaries and social skills, guys. This is something that a so, uh, support worker can do if they're appropriately trained. Guys, and I am still friends with this lady, but it encouraged me to do this video for the simple reason I thought, hang on, she can't be the only one trying to have that white saviour trope of money of I'm gonna rescue you from yourself, but not realizing at the same time that's denying us the ability to learn and grow from our own mistakes in relationships. Whether that be friendship or with a support worker, whether that be with a boss. So guys, I will do a more concise video on the phrases that really annoyed me. They didn't trigger me in the traditional sense, but they annoyed me and rubbed me up the long way and I've just been suppressing them thinking, ah. Oh, she doesn't know, she doesn't know, and then it just hit me that her only experience of disability is someone who is very complex needs, who has grown up in 
a care home pre-NDIS and that she really is trying to push connections and take on too much and then when those relationships fail or people put boundaries around them she doesn't understand um so guys i will see you guys in the next video please like share and subscribe thank you